Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 6 of what if Naruto was given a gift that changed everything. Remember to get this one to 200 likes as usual, share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto traveled to Oshirama's time. It is a final episode guys over on Anime King 2. So go ahead and check it out and enjoy. And also remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both and making and making too. Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the and making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And yeah, without further ado, what is we begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last time we left off, Naruto rushed back to the bridge as he saw a fog everywhere as he made his way. As Naruto looked around, as he heard fighting going on as he made his way, he quickly wrapped up Kakashi and Zabuza, leaving Kakashi confused why he was wrapped up and Zabuza irritated as he tried to break free, but the chains were at his vital areas. As Naruto was simply asking for Miyazu and Gozu, as Zabuza said that he would never bring those two idiots here in a battle like this. As Naruto released them and allowed them to continue their fight, as their battle started up once again. As Naruto made his way as he found Haku, he was about to enter but Haku eyes don't get on stopping him. It seems like Haku wanted to finish off the Uchiha first then take him on. So with that, he waited as Sakura wanted to go and help Sasuke but Naruto was going to involve himself as Sai was trapped in there as well. After all, if Sakura were to help and they lose, the bridge builder will still die. If she were to stay here and they lose, what Sakura could do against all of them. Although Naruto would help them because he didn't want to do the bunch of paperwork. After all, just standing here and allowing them to die. Well, no one would know. As the battle quickly wind down when Haku quickly rushed to save Zabuza as Kakashi was about to kill him. But a chain yanked around Haku's neck and pulled her away. Yes, Naruto ended up saving Haku as Zabuza was killed. Haku started to cry. As she, she was upset, as Naruto wanted her to get angry, as he kept on taunting her, but she lost all the fire in her eyes. Lucky for him though, Gato came on the bridge with all of his men, as Naruto vented out his anger by slaughtering them. As they went back to the house, as Sai did not know Haku's gender, as Haku revealed it to me that she was a girl, as Naruto said that he would take her back to Konoha, as Kakashi knew that if she went back here right now, she would probably die, and given the state that she was in, she would probably die just walking. Because people will take advantage of her. And she doesn't actually want to live anymore. So they went back to Konoha as Hiruzen. I had a headache for all the things that Naruto did on the mission. Well he was the one that gave Naruto free reign to do as he please. As Naruto decided to make Haku stay at his apartment. After a while Haku got really annoying. Because she kept on coming at his room with a weapon. But then she started bringing a weapon. As the both of them talked as Haku could see that Naruto did not really feel much. As he wanted to know the joy of certain things. As she just lie there, not really doing much. As time passed, Naruto kept on with his missions. As he met up with his team and Izumi once again. As the time kept on passing, as Naruto started to have those visions again, something that sick him happened. As he saw his mother and his father in bed together. Remember, he was experiencing the vision as he was his mother. So he got up and he puked in the sink. As those memories were getting too vivid. And he was experiencing images as if he was a woman. And he hated them. As he turned towards Haku with a crazy look in his eye. As he started to rip off her clothes. As he had to prove that he wasn't losing himself. To show that he was a man, he was not a girl. As Haku just lied there, as Naruto snapped back to his sensei when he saw her. As she closed her eyes and tilted her to the side. She heard nothing as she asked him did he find what he was looking for. As he had stopped, he quickly broke through the window as he ran away. So yeah guys, so it's basically that's where we left off. 
you guys can switch across the beach and check out for yourself. So, what do you say we begin this new episode? Loud cracks echo through the forest. Later than they had to be. Shinobis were known for their strange sleeping cycles. But generally, it was 3 in the morning. And most Shinobis were away on missions, or most of them were fast asleep. It was rare for a training ground to be occupied so early in the morning, even for those who rise up pretty early to get a head start on things. But Naruto couldn't care less about the time, or that his only source of light was the moon. He didn't even care that it was incredibly cold, and the only thing between the element and his body was a thin pair of trousers. The sharp chilling ground under his feet only hiding everything about him, as he swing wildly, his chains tearing through trees and his fists pounding into another one. Already 10 trees were slaughtered through. With a final slam of his fists, the 11th tree fell down and everything went silent. As Naruto stood there a moment his chest rising fast and going down fast. As his fists were covered in chains as he swayed back in front. His ear then twitched. I didn't know you were back in the village he said. He didn't even turn. As a figure stepped out of the shadows. I am really getting better and noticing when you're there said Naruto. As Nezumi tilted her head slightly. The shadows make her mass more menacing. As Naruto allowed his breathing to settle. In that moment of quiet he retracted the chains from around his fist. It was just in time as Nezumi threw a blade across the clearing. As he caught it. She wasted no time as she flashed forward. Then it was a dance of sparks and steel and pain. As she flipped about slashing in a deadly swordsmanship. As Naruto was used to them lacking restraint in their sparks. But tonight Nezumi was vicious. The nicks and cuts that she used to left him with by the end of sessions, they become slashes and cuts. But the pain woke him up as he started to move even faster, as he started to defend himself against her attacks, as he cleared his mind only focused on the blade, as he knew better than to use his chains though. She did not like when you break a proper kinju to fight, not that they would do much better. So instead, his mind was just focused on the sword in front of him as he got cuts and scrapes. It only ended when he fell for one of her feints. As she knocked away his legs and her sword tip was right at his throat. As he looked at her before she pulled away her blade and cheated. She didn't have to wipe any blood off. Her strikes never left blood on her blade. I'm disappointed. She was not talking about his blade work though. Naruto simply grunted and stayed on the ground. I suppose you've been stalking me again then he said. His voice was not filled with any venom though. It was strange as she sometimes just follow and watch him. He didn't really understand what she thought. But the moment he said those words, a thin streak appeared on his shoulder. She cut him, and it didn't even look like she pulled her blade. Observing, she said. We are shinobi, she said. Like that counted for her action. Despite what she was saying, Ruth couldn't face her. Yes. Despite she had an mask, he couldn't look at her. I am disappointed, she said once again. As she sit right in front of him and cross her legs and stare at him. As Naruto simply looked at the ground, what do you want me to say? That I regret it? As he grunted, as his fingers dig into the earth, why was it that out of everyone else it was a quiet, sword woman that got to him the most? She didn't even have to say a word, and he act like some little kid that did wrong. As she stayed quiet though, waiting for him to say something. What then? Do you want an apology? Uzumaki Naruto did not do apologies. If someone wanted that, they have to rip it out of him, and even then it was unlikely. What did he have to be sorry for? That Haku was not fast enough to stop him. That because he did something after he lose himself. That is what she was disappointed in? There was nothing to apologize for. He didn't do it on purpose, he lost control. Still, she remained silent. What do you know, huh? said Naruto. What right did she have? As Naruto became aggressive, you don't know what it's like to have your identity be so unknown that sometimes you wake up and you don't know why your hair is not red and your chest does not feel as heavy as it should. What right did anyone have to judge him? How could they understand anything? But once again, she said nothing. She just stared. So I lapsed in control. So what? Who even care? I just... I'm just... As Naruto. Shoulders slump. I'm losing myself, he said. I am... Disappointed, said Nozomi. As Naruto flinched. As she grabbed his wrist. As... He didn't know what she was going to do with his hand, but he felt it placed on something soft. As he looked up to see that Nezume had removed her chest guard, her black mesh shirt. As she placed his hand on her bare chest, I am disappointed. 
that you did not come to me, she said. Nerdo was looking at her chest or his hand as she had removed her mask and looking at him with a strange look that he didn't really understand. There was silence as she continued to press his arm against her chest. As Nerdo could feel her steady heartbeat, it was slow. As she pressed a bit harder and his hand sank into the flesh. Soft, he thought to himself. As she then released his hand, as she replaced her clothing, as a small part of him was disappointed that his hand was moved, she stood up as he got to his feet as well. What you see are memories. They can never be you because they are not you, she said. Do not focus on what is not you. Think about you, she said. As she did something that Naruto never saw before, she smiled. Then she was gone into the shadows once again. As Naruto stood there for a few moments, his mind whirled with thoughts. He suddenly had a lot to think of. But he was really cold without a shirt. Time skip as Haku walked out of the shower with a small sigh. Naruto changed while ripping off her clothes. They cut her. As those cuts were now clean and bandaged. As she also found another kimono top to wear. Seeing that her previous one was unwearable. She didn't know where Naruto had gone or for how long he would stay there. Or if he would be coming back at all. But when she arrived she saw him there. As he was lying on the couch. He said nothing. Not even show that he noticed her enter. He was looking at the ceiling unblinking. So she said nothing either. She moved to the kitchen to prepare some food. As Naruto was a terrible cook. Used to unboo packs and eat out on missions, survival, and equipment food. They had agreed earlier on in their best interest that it was best if Haku prepared the food. So she did, preparing some rice, acting like what happened earlier did not. But she had to wait until the rice was cooked, so there was an awkward silence until he broke it. I'm sorry. As Haku wondered if she heard him wrong, she was shocked as she didn't know what to say. As he then turned and faced her, why do you stay here? I don't understand, she said. If I were to leave you, don't give me that, said Ruto. You had a lot of opportunity to kill me while I sleep and escape if you would like. You had so much opportunity because I even closed my door at nights. You have proven that if I were to try that, shut up, said Ruto. As he sat up, glaring at her, I am not alert all the time. If you really wanted to kill me, you could. So tell me, why do you stay? It was true, as an aunt, though, one was supposed to wake with the smallest change of their surroundings to be prepared for any ambush. But bad things happen when you have terrible nightmares. While he was having those nightmares and stirring around, he couldn't really do anything. She could have killed him anytime she wanted. I... Haku stopped as she got to her feet. She then started to mess with the ribbon that was holding up her kimono as she removed it as it dropped to the ground. She was completely naked except for the bandages that were in the small cuts. The sight of the bandages made Naruto wince. As he turned away, he didn't know why, but he did. As Haku came over to him, as she held onto his hand, as she raised it, as she placed right on her stomach, as she raised his hand as it passed her chest, until she let it rest on her cheek. This is what you wanted, isn't it? To see me. She said slowly, as Naruto could see all of her, but this time, it is because she wanted to see. This was her choice. As she leaned forward so they were close on the couch together. You are broken. A shattered beam, fragment, and poorly placed back together. You are missing vital pieces that leave some large gap in your heart. As she leaned on even closer. As she turned herself. Until his front was pressed up against her back. I am the same. As she pulled the hand around her into an embrace. As if she noticed a change that came from his body. And pointed her vital spot she said nothing. But they slowly retracted. I am broken too. As she lay her head down into the crook of his shoulder, lying back on him, shattered beyond repair, a tool with no purpose. But maybe. As Naruto twitched, she was invading his personal space. No one was supposed to be this close to him. Well, except for Nezumi. But his body did not react to it at all. Maybe we have enough peace that we could be something together. Maybe we can find some way to fix one another. I want to have meaning again. Please, let me find it and fix the new. Naruto Sama. As Naruto was snapped from his thoughts when the pot and the stove started to clatter. The food is overheating, he said. But there was no answer. As she had fallen asleep. As a chain came from him and pushed the pot of the stove, turned everything off. Huh. Enough pieces between us, he thought to himself. That mean, I have some left. But he decided not to move at all. 
as he lay there with her as he fell asleep. And for the first night in over a week, he had no memories as he had a good night's sleep. Time skip, Hawk rubbed her eyes, a small yawn as she blinked away her sleep, as the cool drawn beneath her feet kept crunching as she stepped from side to side. It was cold this early in the morning as the sun had still yet to rise and all she was able to hold off the cold was the kimono that she was wearing. The cause for the early wake up was the blonde in front of her as he was pacing back in front. As Haku feel that he was having some kind of internal argument but she was still so sleepy as her shoulders were sagging a bit. After their conversation the other night, Haku woke up as he was not there. She waited for him but he did not return and then 3 o'clock in the morning she was awoken as she was dragged out to his random training ground. She at least wished that he gave her the option to grab some underwear. There was a breeze going through the clearing after all. Okay, Senruto, as his voice snapped her out of her sleeping days, I've decided, as he paused, that from now on he said, I'm gonna train you. As Haku looked at him, Nezumi once said that it worked for her, and I once said I was going to be all of my teammates in every way possible. You're going to train me, she said. As Naruto eyes snapped towards her, you have a problem with it, he asked. No, of course not, she said. He nodded, his expression turned back to normal. You're strong, but only when you run away, Senruto. As he seemed to not care about the look on her face. She had prided herself on her skills. She was a weapon for Zabuza after all. But he was basically saying that she was blunt from certain angles. But she also escaped direct confrontation with him because of some delayed traps. Also, he was the first person on her age to keep up with her speed. As she decided to just stay quiet. Your speed is your strong point, but that will only work until you meet someone faster than you or someone able to capitalize on slowing you down. If they can do that and you're as fragile as a chunin, your move lack versatility to the point that confrontations with you, without you running and chasing, even with that, I already work out your bloodline and your affinities. Saruteko told me that if you want to live through combat, you either need to toughen up so you can take the blows or make yourself untouchable. As Naruto saw two of those examples, Kuma, a tank that could literally walk through a lot, and Nezumi, whose kimono he had never seen so much as torn, knows your chance to choose Senruto. As Haku tilted her head in confusion, she was about to ask what he meant by that, but he didn't give her any time. As a chain went towards her top speed, she quickly jumped back. As a few chains started to swirl around Naruto's body, in the dark and clearing with his shadows over his eyes, he looked like a demon. If you're standing there and not running, did that mean you chose the first option? As seeing a sweat roll from her face, and went to her chin and splashed on the ground. The moment it splashed sounded out. The both of them vanished with speed. Throughout the night anyone passing by would hear the predator laughing as he stalked his prey. Time skip. As Haku stood there, sweating, aching, as she was shivering as well from the cold, and a few scratches, she had a revelation. Naruto training was more like torture. Well, it has been a week since they started this, and Haku has had this revelation multiple times. As the sun started to come over the trees to mark the dawn. I think you did better today, said Naruto. As his tone was unusually chipper as he made to leave. Haku noticed this as well. At the end of each session he came out in a better mood, looking refreshed. As she just grunted as she felt exhausted. They've been doing this for the past two hours non-stop. Well, he said that she did better. So perhaps he means she gained some more experience. For instance, she now not went into bed without something that she was dressed to fight in. She never noticed at first, but now she noticed that Naruto always wears something that he can always fight in in the morning. He always went to bed in it. As she got the feeling that Naruto has been put through this training and he was no putting her through it. As he said some things like come on, Kuma would have barely noticed that blow. Or not exactly the blade type huh? I bet a few sessions with Nezumi would change that. As Haku never ever want to meet these people, they sound rather crazy. But still, they had words of wisdom. In the past week alone, their ability to dodge and fly had increased a lot. She supposed ever training with Zabuza alone had limited her in that regard. She was used to dodging his heavy blade. As fast as a man could swing it, there was only certain ways that he can do. But Naruto's chains were flexible and can go in all type of directions. So her brain was sending message to her body, unconsciously, for just to move and twist out of the way. And she has gotten better at it. But something was happening to her as well. Yes, with all these training with him and moving around, twisting and turning, she felt strange. She was no stranger to sex. After all, it was a weapon for Kunoichi and other 
Shinobis as well. Yes, for both genders, for them to use it to extract information. She knew the general thing around it. As Sabuza had explained to her, rather awkwardly, that she would be, well, changing. As she had lost count of her age when she was by herself, but she was sure she was 14 to 15, her own those age group. She didn't know why, that was rather strange, was it? Coming out of a two hour session with the person that was basically your torturer, your jailer. It left her flushed and excited. That was strange, wasn't it? As she did her best to push that out for mind though, this was not the time. As she got some bandages and work on her cuts, she has been forced to hide her medical supplies as Nurt had pointed out that ninjas will go for the medic of the group to take them out first so they cannot help the others as he proved that point by attacking her waist area that night, shredding her pouches and showing her modesty. It had been a rather uncomfortable night trying to find a position to sleep in that did not put weight on her waist. When she finished her ear twitched slightly as she got something. Oh, so you finally noticed me, a voice said. As Haku could tell it was a girl. I must be getting sloppy. If someone that isn't even a proper shinobi caught me out. As Haku did not recognize the voice, as a woman dropped over a nearby branch. It actually startled Haku because the shadows there were not dark or big enough to conceal the girl. But then, Nurta's display abilities to blend with the faint of shadows. Haku eyes narrowed on then. Was there something you wanted, Haku said, as she felt a bit nervous in this girl's presence. But there isn't something she wanted to do to offend the girl. After all, she was still on probational period. Well, now that you mention it, the girl placed a finger to her lips as a smile spread her lips as her other arms came under her breast pushed them up, making Haku feel quite self-conscious. I would like to know your relationship with Nurta Senpai. As Haku blinked, do you know Nurta Sama? As Haku felt as she made a mistake as the older girl eyes twitch, but she quickly forced a smile to her lips. Of course, I was Nurta Senpai, junior in the core. You just don't learn someone like you do when you're part of the Anfu. Everything is laid there, she says. She placed both hands on her hips. But Anvu wear masks, don't they? Haku said. The girl just twitched slightly, her forced smile becoming rather strained. You, the girl said, with an angry look. As she wasn't fake smiling anymore, you wouldn't understand. Others didn't understand either. They didn't get him like I do. The girl took a step forward. I'm sure, Haku said. As she got her feet hit away from this girl. But the girl pushed forward and stepped in front of her. Their faces inched apart. I don't think you do. People just don't see it. He's just misunderstood. As Haku stepped back, Nurutasama, there wasn't anything to misunderstand with him. He was rather open with everything. But that seemed to be the wrong thing to do as the girl had whipped up towards her. Do not call him that. The girl quickly replaced her features with a smile. I mean, not that he doesn't deserve it, but Haku was surprised. The girl switched from a fierce Konoichi to a shy academic girl in seconds, even with a blush in her cheek. She was even biting her bottom lip. I think I should. As Haku was going to walk off, but the girl hit snap back towards her. No, you still don't understand. You're just like everyone else. Only the captain saw it. They respect Nurta Senpai. In every mission, they will always have him a second command. They trust him for a reason. As Haku would imagine what Naruto would say. Second in command? Of course. How were they supposed to keep an eye on me? I tend to go a bit overboard when I do things. The girl, continue, not noticing Haku thinking about, well, what Naruto would actually say to that. He was always so compassionate to his teammates, allowing us to engage the enemy if he couldn't face them himself. He cared about all of us, but no one ever saw it. They only saw the violence in the fighting, and they labeled him some kind of monster. Haku couldn't understand. Naruto? Compassion? Those two words didn't even seem like in the same sentence. Never mind, describing him. Why the hell would I let those weaklings fight? They would have all the funds for themselves, as she could see him, literally see him, holding on to his chain while saying that. Yes, Naruto wasn't compassionate, letting others fight when he didn't want to. What was this girl talking about? He always come to her aid when we need him the most, the girl said. She wasn't even looking at Haku anymore, she was smiling to herself. Have you seen the amount of paperwork they make you fill out if a teammate died in a mission? Especially if you can't provide the cause. Huh. As Haku imagined, as that was what Naruto would say. He didn't care about things, as she knew that, and his chains, as the girl bit her lips even more. I've never seen anything like them before. That is what they all say after I impale them from behind. As she had to cringe a bit at that answer that her mind brought up. But that was the exact thing that Naruto would say, 
They're just so beautiful, like Luigi said. But Haku, imagine Nurta had that final say. Yes, there's something just so indescribable about my chains when they're dripping in blood. The girl then turned as she looked towards Haku. You disagree? Well, if she would give this girl a proper answer, she actually liked how Nurta chains look and the way they glisten in the dark and the way they sway hypnotic. But what do you use them for though? In any case, Sakuna Waku no Uiche stepped forward and snarled in her face after Haku did not respond. Haku, as all the hatred and anger in the girl's face vanished, as she now looked like a schoolgirl, blush on her cheeks. As Haku released a sigh of relief that Naruto was back. What is taking you so long? As he walked in the clearing. Um, uh, Naruto didn't bite, the girl said. As Naruto turned and looked at her. I didn't expect to see you here. I mean, I cannot expect to see you. Or, I mean, I, I wanted to see you, she said. But I, I, I have not prepared myself. As Naruto looked at her. Sorry, who are you? As Naruto was even paying attention, he had little tolerance for people who couldn't get a straight sentence out. He didn't even seem to notice that something snapped inside of her, but unfortunately Haku did. As the girl then rushed over to Haku and held her by the shoulder, Haku right? You can call me Kinami. There, we're friends, right? We should have a spar, that is what friends do. They spar one another as she was nodded vigorous at this point and Haku was forced to nod to her. She felt like if she did not, the girl was going to try and rip her in half. As she had a rather tight grip on her shoulder, as Haku sent a look over her shoulder towards Naruto, trying to tell him that she did not want to fight with this girl. But, what Haku saw was an amused look on his face. Of course, she should have expected this. No doubt you would think that this was good training for her. Never mind the fact that she just came out of one of his damn training sessions and she was exhausted. Go ahead, it might be fun, said Naruto. Tanami seemed ecstatic as she dragged Haku out in training field. Before separating, and she took up an unusual stance from her. She stood very straight, one hand behind her, one hand was stretched out in front of her. It seemed too rigid to be a tight to stance. As Haku moved into a lower stance, she was resigned at this point if Nurta had no connection to stop this. Well, there was little she could do at this point. Despite her aching muscles and fatigue, she figured she, if she ended this quickly enough, she would make it through. As, after training with Naruto, she was not always one to make the first move in the fight. She was always waiting and looking out for her opponents to make the first move to find the flaw in their techniques. But when Naruto fight, he was like a vicious beast, just destroying everything. So, yes, you had to make the first move and get away from him quickly as possible. So she adapted, as she shot forward with incredible speed. But the girl just stared it down, unflinching. But the next second, Haku was sent sailing through the air. Her back, her entire body slumped forward like she was caught in the stomach by a devastating attack. When she looked across the clearing, she saw the girl standing there with a smirk, motion for Haku to come once again. As Haku looked over to see Naruto, as he was looking at Konami, strangely, as Haku realized she would be getting no help in his fight, as Konami saw Naruto look at her, as she shot for the close distance between her and Haku. By the time Haku turned her head back, the girl was already there, a savage grin on her lips. As Haku leaped back, as the ear in front of her was sliced through by a blow, that she was unable to block or anything. She had to move. Whatever the girl was doing, always returned her to that upright stance. As Konami just looked at Haku. As Haku take the initiative and move forward. As she was going to put in a feint and move to the left instead of the right. But her six senses took over as she suddenly duck. As she felt the ear above her head, whip and whine as something passed through it at unbelievable speeds. When she got to her feet, Konami was already rushing towards her. As Haku eyes wide and she tried to figure out what was going on. Only to find herself pressed up against a tree. As Konami. Green turned vicious as she was going to end the fight right here and then. But she gave Haku enough time to run through one handed seals as Haku slid through a mirror that she created under her feet. It was a good thing too because when she emerged, the tree that she was pressed up against had been cratered. With a single, a round hole in the center, suddenly everything became clear to Haku what was going on. As staff, as she made her way into the tree lane, the girl head snapped her under her. It was not wise to speak when you were near, on Blue Trainee after all. Ah, you finally worked out. I guess I can stop the hiding then. The hand behind the girl whipped her own, as she had a metal staff in her hand. Haku was surprised though that girl could hide such a thing. And the girl didn't seem like she was going to tell her, as she flickered to the trees where Haku was. As Haku quickly ran through hands and stamped down, the early morning Jew became a weapon as it froze and turned into senbons. Each of them scattered out, as Konami was pampered with them, but she poofed away the next second. Haku's spin as real, Konami came behind her, Shadow Clone Jutsu, or 
necessary to know while in Anvo, but you wouldn't know that, foreigner. As she slammed the staff knock outside, as she flinched as he was forced to roll away with a blow, as her battle evolved into a rapid, close range attack. Now that Haku knew that she was dealing with, she feared slightly better. She could predict the motion of the staff as it had a similar length to Zabuza's blade. But what she couldn't predict was the moment when Konami detached her staff into two smaller pieces mid swing. As Haku got striking her right arm and left leg, as she had to quickly substitute that nearby log so she wouldn't get any more hits, as the log was broken into splinters. Haku was quickly tiring, the adrenaline was wearing off, and her previous fight in Naruto was catching up with her, as their brawl began again, and Haku couldn't defend much. Bruises started to pile up as she was sure that girl had cracked at least one of her ribs. Her strikes were unpredictable and fast. As Haku tried to create another mirror between them, but her fingers were too tired and clumsy, as it was too weak. As Konami break right through it, pampering Haku with her own mirror pieces. She ended up on the ground beaten, weary and covered in cuts. She could only win as the older Konoichi came in to end the battle. Haku closed her eyes, but she felt nothing. As she slowly opened her eyes, a chain had wrapped around the girl's staff and wrapped around her arm stopping her. Seeing who the chain came from, the girl squealed a bit as she turned back to her shy self. Ah uh, ah, uh, Kerosu Senpai, she said, as she did not notice her slight slip of a name. As the chain removed from her hand and went back to Naruto, I must have gotten a bit carried away. Heat of the fight and all that, she said. As she looked innocent now, but a moment ago her eyes were screaming for blood. I recognize you, said Naruto. As the girl's eyes widened, three sizes. A soggy, right, said Naruto. The hopeful look was shattered as she looked back down. Put now with the staff, actually. It's Usagi, she said. I recognize the way you fought the staff, said Naruto. If there was one thing that stuck with him, it was combat styles. You've gotten stronger. As her expression became once the bright again. Uh, you, you think so? As she took a step forward. When he nodded, she left forward and pulled him to a crushing hug. Only for a moment though, as 50 chains burst from her body, Rikki tear her to pieces. But she quickly bounced off. Thank you, Karusu Senpai. I'll become even stronger. Strong enough that you recognize me as equal, you see. As she chose that moment to make her withdrawal. As she didn't even remember about Haku. As she quickly left. As nerd the eyebrow and twitch. The only reason why I didn't tear her through. It would be difficult to explain later. As he hated to be touched. As he looked towards Haku. You could have done better. You also have to pick up your training. He really did not like the fact that his pupil. As he has taken Haku to see her as a pupil. Was so thoroughly defeated. As he heard her groan behind him. As he paused. But I suppose you did okay. I'll let you have tomorrow off. And with that, he vanished. As a small smile came on Haku's face. Perhaps she wasn't the only one benefiting from these training sessions after all. Time skip. Naruto was in a rather good mood as he went through the Hokage's tower. As you could see a grin on his face that exposed his canines. For the office workers though and the tunes that move about, all they saw was a vicious thing moving through them. As they could see the glint in his eye and his canines as well. As Naruto ignored the wide berth that he was given as people littered across the room to get out of his way. As the secretary flinched when she saw that smile. With a quick motion she waved him through. The Hokage smiled as Naruto stepped inside. As the Chunin shifted their gaze away from Naruto quickly. As they just continued their jobs of sorting through mission scrolls. Ah Naruto it's good to see you bright and early as always in your reason. I hope everything is going well for you and Konoha latest guests. As he went on he knew that Naruto was an talkative type anyway. I assume that you're here for a mission. This will be your first for a few weeks now, correct? As Naruto nodded, giving Haku day off, also alone to get out of the village for a while. But the Hokage coughed in his hand as Naruto felt his good mood evaporating. Something was wrong. About that. As Naruto's eyes narrowed, you've been specifically requested for a certain assignment. And I have no reason to deny the request. You'll be acting as a proctor for the second stage of the upcoming tuning exams. It took Naruto a moment. What? As a skull came on his face, Hokage-sama. Don't you think that's a waste of my time? As a few tunings went deeper into their work as he could swear they heard the rattling of chains. But Hiroson just remained composed, his friendly smile never wavering. On the contrary, I consider the advancements of the next generation, what would have been your generation in fact, the highest priorities. In any case, considering the type of missions you use or the request, this will go a long way in offering some diversity. As Naruto was about to say something but Hiroson raised the eyebrow, it was a look that every Konoha ninja got at one point. It was to say, are you really gonna question me on this? Right, Naruto. Having to babysit a bunch of kids through a test that he could have done when he was 9. It did not sit well with him at all, he was furious. Oh, and before I forget, you won't be the only proctor for that stage. 
He didn't know why, but his stomach just dropped at that. As two arms came over his shoulders. Yeah, isn't that great, kid? As Naruto smelled the dongo, it was strong on her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As Naruto to calm himself, what exactly will I be doing, Hokage sama? He asked. Here's a smile and wave him off. I'll leave that up to Uncle's discretion. She has the experience in this matter. As Naruto turned, as he was a gleam in Uncle's eye. As Naruto turned to leave the room, this should be fun, right? said Uncle. You and me, Proctor buddies, as Naruto started to walk out of her. Just wonderfully, he said. As people started to move out of his way, as a dark aura was coming from him. But Uncle didn't seem to notice, as she was glad at everything else. You know, I don't know why you're set against this thing, she said. As they exit the tower, a guy like you, I thought this would be right up your alley. It was early in the morning and the air was frigid, so there wasn't too many people walking around. As Naruto jumped up on a nearby roof, as Uncle followed him. Oh yes, babysitting a bunch of brats. Sound perfect for me, he said. As a chain came from his left arm and pierced into a building and pulled him over. As Uncle joined him with a laughter. Babysitting? Obviously. You never procured her the exam before. Yes, because there were so many opportunities for it. While in Anfu, he said. As Uncle shrugged. Well, I can't comment on that. But I think you have the wrong idea on being a proctor, she said. As she stepped in front of him, stopping his path. You don't have to worry or not if the people you're watching over become chunins or not. The exams do that for you. A proctor's job is to test the mental fortitude of the examinees. The tests will test them individual skills. As Nurta blink, basically it's our job to scare the crap out of them, said Uncle. As Nurta raised the eyebrow, as Uncle chuckled a bit, as he slapped him on the chest, and you wonder why I picked you for that. It took him a while to catch up, but a vicious smirk spread over his face. So all I have to do is see if they have the will to become a shinobi, he said. Yep, basically, just be yourself, she said. As she slipped a piece of paper in his hand and bumped him on the nose and jumped back before he could do anything. Just be there tomorrow around 10.30. You probably won't even have to do much. As she body flicker away. As Nurt didn't understand how she keep on getting away with things like that. As he placed his hand on his nose, he would have skewer others for less. Is life had too many strange elements lately, confusing ones. He looked at his hand at the note. Training Ground 44, huh? Despite the rather common name, Training Ground 44 was rather unruly and he liked it. Even from the outskirts where Naruto leaned against the fence, he could see animals inside slithering about as he saw a large snake which he was having a steering contest with as the first trickle of Jennings that passed the first stage of the exam walked into. They decided to stand off to one side as Naruto was silent and had released an aura as he looked at the snake. As more teams filed in, the atmosphere was becoming rather tense and Naruto was making it even worse. As a few of the Jennings that recognized him were glaring at him from a distance. As Uncle blasted away on the scene. Alright kiddies, she said. The second round of shooting exams start now. But most of them were not looking at her. They were staring awkwardly at Naruto. As Naruto allowed a few chains to come out of his body and they were rattling. As the snake was hissing at him. Uncle cleared her throat and Naruto looked around. But that was not good. Because when he looked towards him, he was sending all that vicious wave that he was sending towards the snake. Not to mention he hadn't retracted his chains. Many of them felt like they wanted to run. What he said. As most of them took a step back from the ward alone, as Uncle smiled, she definitely paid the right person for the job. Clearing her throat once again, she finally gets some of their gaze back to her. Well, I should inform you that this is your last time to drop out before the exam begins. After that, you won't be able to leave the forest for a full five days. As some of them glanced towards Naruto before a single hand rose up, a girl from the grass. I, I want to quit. As her teammates looked at her in shock. I don't want to be anywhere near kissing Naruto. At the mention of Naruto's nickname, as the murmur spread through the crowd like a wildfire, few of them did not recognize him, but they did know of the name, and now seeing the chains, everything clicked to them. Me too, a boy with dark shy hair from the inner rain said, as his teammates wasn't bothered by it. Me too, a girl from the inner sand, but she was looking between Naruto and another three from the inner sand, but she was mainly looking at one person, one with red hair, with a kanji for love on his forehead. As a hand was also going up, it was from a pineapple year boy, but his teammate slapped it down as the Nara rubbed his hand. Troublesome, he said. Anyone else, Uncle asked, but no one else gave up. Wonderful, they now start to explain the rules of the exam. As Naruto tuned everything out until Uncle spoke, something regarding him, and that is where my wonderful assistant comes in. As everyone turned their gaze towards him once again, he simply scowled at them because he hadn't been listening. 
as most of them look away, as he caught the eye of the Uchiality mate at Nami though, and the redhead that the Xan girl seemed so scared of. Both of them were looking at him with odd expressions. Naruto saw something strange in the redhead eyes. Before he turned his head, Naruto Kun here said uncle, will be given three sets of scrolls and will be traveling in the forest with you. As Naruto Iron rose, as a single chain came from and started to scrape on the ground, but uncle ignored him. Any teams can attack him if you like, team up and bush him if you like. Be warned though, he can attack right back. As Naruto caught on as a few more chains came from his back and started to cackle. Time skip. I don't remember agreeing to this Naruto, as him and uncle watched from one side, the teams signed their waivers and collecting their scrolls. As Uncle simply shrugged, I decided to make things a bit more interesting. What? Afraid a few Jennies might get the drop on the big bad Naruto as she waved her arms around imitating his chains. You do realize I'm just going to be walking a straight line towards the tower, he said. Well, that's no fun. Didn't you see any teams you like to go after, she asked. Maybe torment them a bit. Just for fun, she said. Wouldn't that be unprofessional, he said. I suppose it would, she said, as she shrugged. If any of those Jennies come after me, it's their funeral. And with that he pocketed the scrolls as he walked off. For a moment uncle thought that she made a misjudgment. She shook, huh? they signed the waivers. Alright everyone, line up at the gates. The second part of the tuning exam begins now. But guys it'll be in the episode right here, for the next part if you start to do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on the bell notifications they posted. Remember to share all of your friends and social media platform. But I'm over now, see you guys soon, peace.